Welcome everyone back to another Scouts of Entertainment Reforged replay. Today is a nice 4v2 in the winter at Edoras. Now before I get started, I'd just like to let you guys know, per my community post, I will be away next week on a summit in the desert, but I will be trying to stream while I'm out there. Um, I'll try and get some replays out towards the end of this week and throughout next week while I'm away. And um, that's just the situation as it is at the moment. Kind of sucks, but um, you know, have to have to live with it. <laughs> Bloody work, anyway. If you'd like to send me through other Reforged replays like this, there are now links displayed on your screen and also in the description below. There's also a PayPal option, subscribe star, Patreon, or stream destination link also in the description below if you'd like to support my work. Now, if those are options for you, then please remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, tick this bell for notifications, and leave your own thoughts about this bell in the comment section below as it does really help the channel. I'll also leave a link to my Discord in the description below, Scouts Reconnaissance, where you can come in to post your replays, post your own videos as well, as uh, there's a section for other YouTubers there as well. And with that, let's jump in. So today's replay comes from Froggy, one of four attackers, commanding Rudar today. We've got some Rudar swordsmen over here. We've got about five units of these big boys, or 1,000 of them. we got uh, Herodan Berserkers, we got Herodan Rangers over here. Rudar Clansmen, these guys here look like they're armoured up, they are. Two uh, three units there. Some Dumb and Hunters. Two units of them, I think. And some Dumb and Spearmen. Yeah, Troll Shoe Axo is next. Two units there. And some Froidum Javelins. Yeah, well, I thought we had Witch Omen Slavers somewhere around here, but um, I might have missed them. I'll keep an eye out for them later. I think he would have brought them. They're over here. Of course they are. We got two units of Etimos Trollhunters as well. And with that, we move on to his ally, Orcs and Misty Mountains, commanded by Tundras Fox, a well-known veteran. You've got some Drake Broodlings here, um, an Orc Manganel. We don't see a lot of these these days. They're um, they're a staple in Total War Silmarillion. We've got Heavy Goblin Spears here, two units. We've got Cave Trolls, some Cave Troll Drummers. The rest of the army is conveniently hidden, annoyingly. And there's a unit out here which is invisible to us. I found it before, but... Um, I'll find it again later. Might take too long. We have another Orcs in Oh no, this is the rest of Tundras' army. So it could be a... My bad. It could be a 3v2 today. We've got Goblin Archers up over here. We've got Heavy Golden Spears. Goblin King's Bodyguard. Cave Troll Drummers. And another unit of Cave Trolls. Okay, yeah. So it is a 3v2. Next we have Dunland. Commanded by the Chris Almighty. We've got Dunland Spearmen here. Two units. We've got four units of Dunland Veterans. We've got three units of Dunedin Clansmen, two units of Dunedin Pikemen, and Half Orc Spearguard here, two units, and Half Orc Vanguard, two units. We also have some Spears of Orthanc. And with that, let's start with the defenders. we got Arthurdain, commanded by Awesome Boss Death. We've got Dunedin Troll Slayers here. Arthurdain Marksman here, two units, armoured up. Oh no, not armoured up. This is your basic model. So, unarmoured. I'll retract that. We got some Dismounted Knights of a Numinus. We got Dismounted Faunus Aaron Knights and Numenorean Cohort. Down here we've got some Dismounted Faunus Aaron Knights. Two units of them, I think. Over here we got some Arthurdane Pikes. Not armoured up. We got Arthurdane Pikes again, not armoured. A trebuchet belonging to Jevamy, who's commanding Numenor, the other defender. We got some Belliger Archers. Arthurdane Men at Arms, basic model. Belliger Footman. And some more Arthurdain Men at Arms, Numenorean Cohort, another unit of Pikemen, Belliger Archers over there. We've got some Naru and Naru Sentinels, along with another unit of Belliger Archers, make that two units of Sentinels. We've got some Royal Legion of Amanos and some Pharisim Swordmasters. Next, we've got some Numenorean Cohort and some Anumina Skate Guards. We've got some Seafarers Nindamos and some Troll Shaw and some Dune Nine Troll Slayers, my bad. We've got um, Dune Nine Rangers and Wardens of the North and more Dune and Dune Rangers. And that is it. So, let's get this siege started. Enjoy. So we'll head to the top. Get a bird's eye view of winter at Adaros. I wonder when Jeb will decide to use a trebuchet. Froggy's army is way too spread out for it. Orc and Manganel's got to get a lot closer to be effective. That thing shoots wildly. Should come with an instruction manual. 
But it looks like the attackers are a little ways off. They're going to regroup and obviously decide their approach. So see you soon. Alright guys, the attackers are approaching. Tundra's using his trolls to move up his um, battering rams on either side here. You think the trippish thing might, might try and take a shot at these guys as they approached? You know, a direct shot could kill at least two or three trolls. Troll drummers, that's what you call multitasking right there. Ryan Co-op moving to seal the gap. Well, they've got two gaps now to deal with. Fen is a little bit slow to organize their defense or move troops down. I think they're being shot by the Dumb and Hunters. Yeah, they are. We've got Belga Flamin here. We've got some Belga Archers firing somewhere. Belgrads is slightly better than the Dumb and Hunters. And so we've got some archers on the hilltop near the trebuchet firing in. Yep, another unit of Belgrads is there. And Froggy leaving them in tight formation. Surprise Froggy's doing that. Goblin infantry, infantry sort of charging in, Nuremberg and Cohort, both units falling back here. Defenders extending themselves a little bit, but not backing themselves up with archers nearby. For the outer units. There's no javelin support, no archer support. Nearest archers are over here. Snow Trolls there, moving up another battering ram. Oh, this is getting ridiculous. Come on! <laughs> Do not range is firing in. I thought in Pikes here getting pelted by Trolls for Axelwoods. So far, it's a solid attack. 6% to 3%. We've got some Mount Berserkers backing up some cave trolls. The Drake Brilliants were thinking about going in. Snow Trolls also coming in. I thought they Pikes withdrawing. So Tundras is moving up his forces. That looked like Evident Spearman there for a second, but it's just Goblin Infantry. Doing no ranges from Awesome being left out here. Oh, well, they're out of ammunition, so it's no real loss, I suppose. If he leaves them out there. We got some Dumbin Hunters making their way towards the rear entrance. Or are they? I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see whether or not Froggy has an angle where he is right now. We got Clansmen, Swordsmen all standing by. We've got Awesome falling back, we've got the attackers just surrounding the city, moving in a bit piece by piece. Chris keeping most of his army at well outside the city at the moment. Making our way up. Dumb and Pikes facing the wrong way. Saying retreat, retreat, but they're not broken. Oh no, there is a broken unit there saying it. I thought him in at arms. Okay, we've got a trebuchet here. We've got a nice blob of troops, but the trebuchet is not firing on them. Is there any real point to that anymore? They've already taken the city. They can move their army in through other portholes. Very much in 
The other guys just from Jim and me don't have a shot. Sure, they can move down here a little bit. We've seen arts units deployed here before. I suppose I should count the lucky stars. The attackers don't have a catapult. Because this is the first spot I'd be firing at. What's surprising is we don't have archers deployed over here, we don't have javelins deployed over here. We don't even have the trebuchet deployed over here that could be firing directly into this nice juicy blob. We just barbecue it, send them all into a giant um, chain route. Troll drum is all the way down there. We've got an orc manganel. That could spell some issues for the defenders themselves later. Tundra's looking to move it to the top of the hill there and fire in. Probably a good idea. The defenders, to their detriment, are not reacting to that manga now. It's 9% to 20%. Jeremy not really getting his archers into position at all. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Mangadel is not firing in at the moment. Oh no, it is firing. Let's see what it can do. There you go. That created a nice hole. It caused 106 after the pikemen to break. The attackers really bobbing themselves up here. Troll Straxos. They really have a shot. No, they don't. Most of the axes to the defender's delight, going straight into the top of the hill here. Very few actually getting into the Numenorean cohort there, which is great news for Jev. Jev's pulling back his sentinels, but... Now why isn't this trebuchet being moved up here? This is to the real detriment to the defense. And a lot of Jev's archers are being impeded by this trebuchet. He's being impeded by his own archers. We've got two units of other archers, I think, here, just stationed together. Really affecting each other's accuracy. Don't have a shot. If he could spread these guys out a little bit, he could have one unit over here firing to the attackers coming up the hill. He could fire, have one unit down here, shooting at the reinforcements coming in. Like, Froggy has really bunched up his troops here. He could get some easy kills just shooting down at them. But they're not doing it. we got some dumb and hunters coming back here for some reason. They're out of ammunition. we got some seafarers and moss back here. But the defenders are withdrawing to the top of the hill. Which is interesting. We've got Drake Brillings being exercised around Adoras right now, as you can see there in the distance. As far as even Drakes need to exercise. And that's solid use of the trebuchet right there. That's what we wanted to see. 15 to 30. Defenders way behind the 8 ball on this one. But this trebuchet could get him back into them. Yeah, 
the only reason for the attack is when this happened, or while this, this is happening, is they probably have to pull back some of their troops and try and move up some of their troll show axos and javelins in this spot right here. You know? Try and fire on the enemy and just sort of try and keep their forces as separate as possible while also trying to weaken the defense. So Trebuchet is a big threat to their attack. So what that what this trebuchet is actually encouraging, I think, is um, a rear attack, and they've got plenty of troops to do it. They can send plenty of men around there. It's not like the, it's not like there's actually any real opposition down here. The defenders have pretty much opened it up all the way to the very top. Trebuchet choosing to conserve their ammunition for some reason. You'd think one more volley would do it. I mean, I think one more volley is all that's required here to send most of these troops running for the hills. They're running off the hill, as it were. We've got wavering, we've got exhausted. This need one big push. And this attack collapses. Goblin archers getting into position behind the mangonel. It's a strange place to put them, especially if he plans to use them. A little bit of a sally out here from this metaphornos Aaron Knights. Okay, looks like Tanus is trying to use the mangonel but struggling to find a target. You think he'd just try and go for the targets right here? I mean, as the defenders really bunched up their forces, surely the mangonel could fire on them. You have to think. The battle is very much in our favor. Victory will be ours. Trebuchet not firing. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. That's the rear attack gun. Any progress on that front? The Dre Brewing standing by. No casualties on this side. And Froggy stationed up stationed a lot of forces ready to go. Surely he should try to commit soon. Numenor and Arthur then carving their way through the forces. Heron and Berserkers should slow them down. They'll have a tough time driving them back. But Spears of War Thing too, standing by, but I don't think these guys have used up any ammunition yet. Doesn't appear so. Looks like Tundras might have brought two cave troll drummers. Oh, I bought two. Twenty-four to forty-seven at this point. Don't need any clansmen coming in. Mangan all crew down to four thirty-nine. Golden King's bodyguard too on the front lines. There's Tonus' general up here, I don't know. Don't see any white orcs. Okay, that wasn't 
Oh, was it alright? I don't know. There was a chunk of friendly troops there that it hit, but um, yeah, it, it nicked them. But I think the attackers caught the brunt of it. And we've got 163 goblin spears breaking. Tundras again moving up his manga now. Spears of War thing can surely find a spot to shoot. I mean, no, not here. The angle that doesn't look the best. Oh, no, hang on. Maybe they could sit here and fire into the Numinous Gate guys. I think they've got a shot there. We've got Drake Brothings trying to cause chaos here in the Citadel. Froggy's making his move. He's charging in in force. For some reason, the defenders. Oh, the defenders. Did leave a unit of cohort here, but Froggy swept them aside, it seems, very quickly. And for some reason, <laughs> knocked over the entire unit of Rudar Swordsman here. Alright. Probably, maybe, should have tried to use the Drake Brilliance to cause as much chaos as he could. Froggy has a lot of troops back here. His entire army is about to come up the hill. I mean, we've got the best of the best of Arthurdane and Numenor's troops here. It might be enough to hold Froggy back. But Froggy's going to get moved faster. He's, he's got to run those troops in. I don't know why he's moving up so slow. It also doesn't help with them being knocked down. <laughs> by the Drake Broodlings. Thirty-one fifty-six. All right. Command the fort. The attacker's left flank has pretty much collapsed. Don't really have a lot of high-quality troops. So right. we've got some Catros here that can be sent in, but they are blo they are bloodied up. Brought in javelins and troll tracks, so I was moving in. Probably still have ammunition. Richard and Slave is also here. We've got a lot of troops here, not being sent up just yet. How bad was that? I don't know. Our men are in command of the fort. Goblin archers. They are just light tier troops, but they are causing some damage. Okay, Froggy's got the Citadel. Can the defenders fight their way back into it? Froggy still has two units of Etimos Trianders here, probably with ammunition. He's also got some Rudar Swordsmen coming in to support the battle. He probably has to send in the Etimos Trianders. I don't know if the Trollhunters have a shot at anything. But the attackers are scrambling to try and beat back Ruda here, and they've got 3 minutes 14 seconds to do it. Oh, those, those guys here are broken. Cave trolls being sent up, snow trolls being sent up. The attackers doing everything they can to put pressure on this line here. But, you know, even so, I'll probably be pulling everything I've got to try and retake that citadel. I've got 2 minutes and 33 seconds just to take it back.
The defenders are edging closer and closer to it. Widow Clansman trying to push back. Few trees between them and the, and the citadel. There's the flags. They're so close. One minute thirty-five. Forty to sixty-six. Broken. Got some Royal Legion of Armadillos over here. One minute. Rudas Swordsman being sent in. Forty seconds. Froggy sending everything he's got. Just to try and keep them out. Seven, six, five, four, he's gonna do it. Victory is ours. Let it be a salve upon our wounds. So I can't really remember the last time an attacking team has actually captured the Citadel before either side's been destroyed, pretty much. So great job to Froggy. Jev and Awesome unfortunately let themselves wide open there and um didn't realize the danger until it was way too late and Froggy had established a stronghold around their own citadel. And, you know, congrats to Froggy on holding them out. That was a stellar effort. Chris and Tundra Fox did a great job distracting the enemy. They obviously were um, keeping them occupied, very much occupied. And allowed Froggy just to sneak in with his entire army. <laughs> I don't know how he hide an entire army there. But uh, Froggy did it, and he did it well. So congratulations to Froggy on 662 kills. Chris Almighty 612, and Tundra's Fox carried the team on 1135. Jeff and me 2316, Awesome Boss Death 1505. Looking at the kill count there, no real stand up performances except from the Herodane Rangers who got 243 kills. Nice job to them. Alright, congratulations to the Froggy and his team on their stellar performance. Nice capture of the Citadel. Again, haven't seen that in a long, long time. This is Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Catch you guys in the next one.